गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आज का जो हमारा सेशन है ड्रोन मार्केट इन इंडिया उसको स्टार्ट करने से पहले मैं थोड़ा इंट्रोडक्शन देना चाहूंगा कि जो हमारी ड्रोन लैब टेक्नोलॉजीज है वो तीन अलग अलग सेक्टर्स में काम कर रही है फर्स्ट सर्वेइंग एंड मैपिंग सेकेंड है एकेडमी और थर्ड है स्टोर और इसके अलावा हम कई सारे अलग अलग प्रोजेक्ट्स पे अभी काम कर रहे हैं तो मेन हमारा एम ये है ये वेबिनार्स का कि जो हमारे ड्रोन के नए नए एंटरप्रोन्योर्स हैं जो कोई ड्रोन के रिलेटेड कुछ नया सीखना चाहता है तो वो आ, हमारे साथ ज्वाइन होके हर सैटरडे को नए नए एक्सपर्ट्स मेंटर्स के साथ जुड़ के उनसे नया नया नॉलेज ले सकें और स्पेशल थैंक्स में कहना चाहूँगा हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी पार्टनर्स इंडस यूनिवर्सिटी मानसरोवर ग्लोबल यूनिवर्सिटी जी टी यू एन एस वी आई टी का और आज के जो हमारे मेंटर हैं मिस विश्वा विश्वानी अग्रवाल जी जो को फाउंडर एंड डायरेक्टर हैं विमान एरोस्पेस टेक्नोलॉजीज के तो मैम मैं आपका वेलकम करना चाहूँगा और मैं आपको यहाँ से आगे का सेशन हैंड ओवर करूँगा मैम कि आप अपना थोड़ा ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन दें और फिर आगे सेशन को बढ़ाए हेलो आई डू कम ऑडिबल टू यू यस मैम थ्री टू सेलो मैं गुड मॉर्निंग थैंक्स फॉर द डॉन वॉम वेलकम सो बेसिकली आज कनेक्टेड हुई सो आई एम द कोफम एंड डायरेक्टर एट विमाना एयर स्पेस कॉर्पोरेशन सो वी आर अ ड्रोन बेस्ड कंपनी व्हिच इज लोकेटेड इन ग्रेटर नोएडा and our major forte is into uh, manufacturing agriculture thing as well as like uh, the drones and id systems they are the official target for uh, so the integration system integration as well as a bad product is so uh, can we start with the presentation yes ma'am sure sure Okay. So I hope this is visible to everyone. My screen was not so good. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay. Uh, so I believe we can start. Right. Okay. So uh, before moving ahead, just uh, want to give a brief. Uh, introduction about uh, the model so as i mentioned that uh, we are into manufacturing so we are providing an ma'am uh, mm -hmm. uh, aapki awaaz hai wo bahut dheere se aa rahi hai so can you speak yes, a little bit loud ma'am uh, so better hai is it better now yes ma'am now better okay it's great please let me know if there is an issue Yeah. So you, as we were discussing, so uh, Vimana basically is a drone manufacturer, service provider, uh, and education company. So uh, we started with the manufacturing the drone components in India. Uh, the objective was that uh, with the starting manufacturing of the component, at least at uh, some point of time in future, we will be able to unpass it. Uh, dependency on other countries like China and other countries for the drone parts because uh, as everyone is aware that majority of the components are being imported. So with that part, we started with the manufacturing of VT four hundred frame, which are the perfect re uh, replacement for F four fifty frame. So uh, I am sure that you might have seen the orange and green frames in the market. So we are the manufacturers. Yeah, so uh, we are associated with uh, Startup India, Startup in UP. We are uh, MSME recognized. We are uh, associated with IIT Mandi. I have Gujarat as well as uh, incubated at uh, IIM Kashipur. So this was a quick, brief introduction about uh, the. Now I would like to move ahead about uh, 
are discussing the topic today. So I'm sure like uh, you all are uh, like, uh, like regular attendees of the sessions conducted by the UTEC and uh, you must be having some understanding about the UAB and US. So, uh, but uh, generally people often confuse, get confused about the difference. Like both the terms are very much similar, uh, UAB and US. So uh, just giving a quick uh, brief understanding about the difference. So, uh, UAVs are only the subsets of uh, UAS, unmanned aerial vehicle, which means UAV is a component that is the bird, the drone, that is UAV. While uh, UAS, uh, it includes not only the unmanned aerial vehicle or drones, but also the GCS, that is the uh, ground control station, which controls the flight and uh, keep the system in place so that the transmitter, receiver, the ground control station, our room, everything is connected. So UAS also uh, comprises of uh, elements such as camera, we have GPS, softwares, and whatever tools that are required uh, for the proper functioning of the room. Now, uh, we will start with uh, understanding that how and uh, like what was the process uh, and when we started with uh, getting the concept of uh, having drones worldwide. So basically, uh, definitely drone technology is a, is a sunrise sector and which is having a very, very exponential growth worldwide. Like in every sector, if you see uh, in India itself, like every domain, every industry is trying to implement any or like n number of applications. So if we talk about the first uses of drones, so it was way back in 1850s, uh, which were used by armies all around the world for uh, training purposes, defense, and surveillance operations. And in fact, for the strikes as well. And uh, uh, for uh, the strike purposes, this is something which is being done from the 1800s. Uh, about uh, the commercial drone, so it was not permitted like for uh, last around 150 years. Uh, it was something which was considered to be mainly used for a defense purposes. But today, if we see, so drones are used in uh, n number of uh, variety of applications, like whether it is defense, whether it is civil applications. So it is it is growing uh, on a very fast uh, pace. So do we have any questions related? Okay. So this is just a quick chart to help everyone understand that how drones started, how the R&D world, how the consumer market approached drones, and how exactly the drone market is emerging. So, so the process uh, started uh, in 1849, where uh, the drones uh, was invented basically in Austria. Moving ahead, then it was used in World War One for the uh, defense and military purposes. Then again, after seeing the uh, like benefits and a lot of applications of uh, drones, then U.S. government uh, launched the program drone program under the supervision of FAA. Moving ahead, seeing the applications, UA, uh, U.S. Navy uh, developed their first RC aircraft. This was the phase when R&D started and for, uh, moving ahead from the defense, we started looking for multiple applications, uh, which was for surveillance purposes. Uh, R&D was done for the surveillance of the drones. Then moving ahead, Israel worked on developing uh, two unmanned uh, surveillance vehicles, which ultimately took the shape that uh, in 1985, US military launched a very large scale UAV development program, seeing the benefits and the use cases of drones. Moving ahead with that phase, already uh, US was working, Israel was working, so they collaborated to develop a medium-sized UAV. So the process continued, and then uh, the product was considered to be used in the consumer market as well. So it was uh, in 2000, 2006, when US government allowed 
the US uh, use of drones across their civilian air. So, and uh, the first UAV controlled by the smartphone was in 2010. And then uh, with the rapid growth, uh, drones were started being used for shooting films, aerial photography, videography, these things. And then in 2014 itself, back then, like uh, around nine years back from now, Amazon then only announced that in future they will be doing the deliveries using drones. And after that, definitely there is no look back for the technology. It is only emerging. Uh, now, like in 2016, uh, for the first time, a uh, live show was done using 300 drones, which Disney conducted uh, for the Christmas in 2016. Uh, like uh, we are talking about the drone show that was already conducted like around seven to eight years uh, from the current scenario. So we can understand the potential of this market by you know uh, just uh, having a idea that the countries the foreign countries us majorly and australia majorly china definitely one of the biggest leaders in drones so they have been putting a lot of efforts to you know uh, develop and uh, explore the use cases so moving ahead uh, seeing that we can be uh, we can power the drones by multiple uh, sources. Then in 2017, uh, we worked on the solar power drones. And then, you know, the R&D started. The companies in US, China, and Israel, they began to research on uh, drone taxi, the uh, taxi services. And then definitely when the COVID strike, so drones were used extensively for, uh, you know, uh, surveillance, for deliveries, and gained a lot of popularity during that time. And in fact, in India as well, uh, I am sure that everyone would have uh, seen or would have experienced it through the news, news portals that the uh, government is doing a lot uh, by using the drones for the surveillance and there were uh, multiple protocols and you know people could not gather at the places. So for that, drones were something that were being extensively used. So moving ahead, uh, like there are uh, currently itself, not only in India but worldwide, a lot of uh, uh, things are being done. Like uh, according to the FAA reports, US and Walmart launched first drone delivery, uh, considering the case that multiple drones, up to 900k plus drones, will be used in that. Sense. So, uh, so far, anyone having any question? Okay, I believe we are good to go. So uh, this is just to uh, you know give a quick uh, understanding that uh, definitely today we are uh, poorly discussing about how India is playing a pivotal role and how Indian market is developing. But for understanding a very uh, broader picture on a global scale, there are multiple parameters available like uh, different companies who are working on these parts. So there are parameters like uh, um, ease of uh, BVLOS operations, which is beyond visual line of sight operations, which countries are working on that. So there are regulations for uh, drone flight area. As we are aware, there are drones like red, green, and yellow. So uh, for a developing industry, it is very important that we have a lot of regulations and rules so that uh, for everyone, there is one single rule which has to be followed and to avoid any sort of confusion. So uh, this chart basically depicts that uh, considering these factors, how the different uh, countries are being favorable and how these are working towards the development of the drone industry specifically. So uh, in terms of ease of uh, obtaining drone pilots, Australia and definitely China is leading our country. India definitely uh, is working on a very uh, fast pace on every sort of, uh, you know. So here we can see that there are 10 major countries who are fully emerged in, you know, working and uh, developing the drone industry. So these are the following countries which are totally working on the core technical projects. So 
COVID-19, as, as I gave a brief, uh, brief uh, this, uh, point of, uh, you know, uh, conversation about the uh, uh, impact of COVID-19, so definitely that was the time where uh, people, uh, like uh, not just the industrialists or the educated people, uh, drone sways to a sector which uh, I believe that without COVID-19, they would not even uh, have seen that what exactly drone is and what potential it can. But uh, during COVID-19, you know, there were very emerging role of drone use cases. Like they were used for uh, contact with delivery, surveillance, enforcement, hygienic applications, and much more. Like currently, and uh, starting from that time, like uh, in fact, the organs that are to be replaced in the human bodies are being also delivered at some uh, places with drones. So this this vision basically started during the COVID nineteen. So uh, exemptions to so administrative exemptions from uh, existing and limiting airspace regulation were removed, and uh, the process to use drones were made uh, were made very you know uh, on a very fast track process that uh, all the deregulations were undertaken. So that drones can be deployed very easily under the COVID-19 scenario. Also, uh, the phase of uh, COVID-19 helped in shifting attitudes towards drone user, uh, uses for emergencies. There were people who uh, could see the positive experiences that during the pandemic, uh, the perspective, uh, perspective of people towards drones to uh, very, very much change. And in fact, like uh, here specifically in India, we can see that after that, government is totally supporting the drone industry. Like, uh, in fact, like uh, if, you, if you see that on every public uh, speaking and every event, uh, the Prime Minister of India definitely speaks about drones and uh, what steps we can take forward, what steps we can do towards you know making this industry uh, move ahead and go on a very fast way. So this is something which COVID-19 had done when everyone was able to see that uh, this this uh, product, this technology is having a lot of uh, impact and a lot of use cases. So uh, these are the, you know, a quick understanding about the particular positive impact. So uh, in India, not only in India, but worldwide, the drones were used, used majorly for three things crowd monitoring, uh, surveillance, and security, and as well as drone release and spraying bodies. OK. So moving ahead here, uh, I would like to uh, discuss about the key segments in drone industry. Means uh, the major uh, sectors where drones have a lot of uh, use cases. So uh, the construction industry, GIS and real estate, has a lot of potential where drones can work. Definitely agriculture, oil and gas, mining, the utility sector. Uh, we have a lot of potential in the counter drones. We can see that multiple of uh, you know uh, illegal attempts are being done on borders and a lot of that. So to uh, work on that sort of technology, counter drones is something which which is having a lot of use cases in the uh, upcoming times. Uh, definitely. For public safety, for the surveillance part, drones add a lot of uh, value as well as a lot of uh, easiness of uh, doing the work. So uh, earlier we discussed that how overall on an international level, uh, drone industry evolved. But if we talk in particular about the evolution of Indian drone industry, so uh, the things took time, but uh, currently, it is uh, being happening on a very, very fast pace. Every now and then we can see that government is uh, releasing new policies. Uh, we are uh, providing new regulations so that we can you know, standardize this industry and uh, work on a very faster pace. So uh, starting that, how this part of the drone industry started in India. So uh, we, first of all, used to import the uh, unmanned aerial vehicle. So moving ahead, the first use was definitely by the Indian Army during the Kargil War uh, with Pakistan in 1999. So that was the first time when Indian government of our country used the drones. 
So uh, after that, government uh, imposed a blanket blanket ban on private uses of drones because of uh, like as I said that if uh, our technology has proof, so there are some cons. So it's not about the cons; it's the technology. It's about how people use it. So seeing that uh, the technology can also you know create some of the things, so government took. Uh, some steps so they can, you know, for some time being, they can put some bans and things. But moving ahead, definitely, government has uh, supported and provided a lot of uh, rules like the civil aviation requirements. See, uh, was the first set of regulations which were established in uh, the year 20, uh, 2018, so that uh, this industry can be uh, ha can have more regulations and can be in a developing stage. In uh, year 20, when COVID strike, drones were used to conduct sanitization and flights during COVID-19. Moving ahead, drone rules in 2021 was uh, released to uh, regularize regulations for drone operations. Moving ahead, we saw the launch of production link scheme, PLI scheme, which provide incentives to manufacturers, Indian manufacturers. So whosoever companies uh, are manufacturing the parts uh, here intensively, indigenously in India only, so they are applicable. Uh, they are uh, a valid applicant for production link incentives. Their government provide a lot of benefits uh, to them for uh, a lot of incentives, a lot of uh, benefits for doing the production here in India. So uh, after seeing. The uh, development of uh, uh, development of applications of the drone here in 2021, government launched the SOP for every drone. Moving ahead, uh, SOMIC scheme was launched, uh, and the basic purpose of this SOMIC scheme was to do the mapping of the products. Then, uh, here in India, regulation on import of drones by DGFT. DGFT uh, Worked on the import part that how we can regularize, how we can add more regulations towards the import of them so that only legal things can happen because government definitely, uh, you know, try that everything whatever is happening should be in a very legal and organized. Then, recently in 2022, uh, Bharat Drone was conducted, which is India's uh, drone festival showcase for the wide adoption of drones technology. And again, uh, the program Drone Shakti was uh, done recently to boost uh, startups and leverage them to facilitate growth in industry. So this is this was something which which uh, gives us a uh, this that how rapidly and how on a very fast pace. Like if you can see, like here in chart itself, starting from 2018 to 2020, there have been multiple schemes, multiple steps, and uh, remarkable decisions which uh, government had taken, which government had launched a lot of programs, a lot of uh, benefits, a lot of uh, policies, everything, so that this industry can grow uh, on a very positive part and the people can understand the value and the use cases of uh, the product. So, so far, anyone is having any question or anything? Okay. So, we will go ahead with the session. Thank you. Just uh, some more understanding about the Indian drone industry. So, in 1990s, the Indian Army acquired UAVs for, uh, from Israel. I thought that uh, during the Kargil War uh, against uh, Pakistan, uh, the first drones were used. So, these drones were procured from Israel. In calendar year 14, 2014, PGCA, the Director General of Civil Aviation, was under the MOC, that is the Ministry of Civil Aviation. The, so the, basically the complete drone industry works under MOC, or uh, Ministry of Civil Aviation. So these uh, organization banned the use of commercial drone in India until it formulated proper rules and regulations. Then in 2020, drones played a crucial role for COVID-19 cars, and then as a part of reforms to make India a global drone hub, by 2030, the government also launched PLI, as I mentioned, 
um, the drone rules and multiple companies like if you go on the startup india portal and other other resources you can find that n number of companies are there which uh, basically means that people are interested and you know uh, they are motivated to work in this industry and to uh, make this grow in a very wide place yeah so i i provided uh, a few points about the drone shakti event which uh, was introduced by the finance minister of india and here uh, startups were encouraged to provide drone as a service because uh, definitely it's a costly product so for everyone uh, it is not possible that everyone can buy it, every every single person so the best uh, would be that initially at this stage of the industry it can be provided as a service so that it can reach to a wider range of uh, people in financial year 23 budget the finance ministry of india mentioned moca will take up where the 15 identified union ministries to use drone as a service for which moca will and hold these ministries by way of cost clearance and by bringing industry academy and startups together so to make sure that uh, the model of drone as a service was used and implemented 15 uh, government identified union ministries were uh, guided and uh, informed to use drone as a service so that uh, people general people can see that since government is using the drones in all the sectors so uh, which will provide a lot of motivation to the companies working in that and definitely will create a lot of buzz about the technology in the country with the atmanirbhar bharat initiative government of india has been pushing uh, indian drone companies for innovation in sectors towards policies so the purpose uh, is to showcase the broad adoption of drones and the substantial employment opportunities which the industry can create now some understanding about how the development of uh, policies uh, happened in indian drone industry so as i mentioned that in 2014 government banned the commercial use of uh, drones so it was mandatory to take permission to operate drone for civil and commercial purposes where uh, from there the permissions were to be taken from air that is air force authority of india ministry of defense ministry of home affairs and other relevant security agency moving ahead after 4 years in 2018 the flying drones or remotely piloted aircrafts were legalized in india until then the drones were not even legal that's the only reason that uh, so much of the security agencies were involved to take up the permission for flying the machine and after that uh, in 2018 uh, by drone policies there were uh, categorization of uh, drones based on size uh, the flying zones were defined UI the UIN that is unique identification number and digital sky token was launched so that uh, UIN basically acts as the number plate uh, a unique identification as we call it like as our vehicles have their number so the same way government proposed that drones should uh, should also have the number plates and the unique identities with them so this step was taken in 2018 moving ahead in 2021 a uh, use of drones for commercial and security purposes was encouraged new rules prescribes penalties for unauthorized import buying selling and leasing of drones prohibition of beyond visual line of sight was done micro and small us were not permitted from flying above 60 meter and 120 meter respectively So what happened is that 2014 it was a year where uh, the or the commercial is not even uh, done. But multiple security agencies were to be involved uh, just to fly a drone. Like how easy it seems now for us to fly a drone or to do missions or in fact to open a company in this domain that was not that easy during 2014. So the development started uh, in 2018. Uh, which was published by the policies published in 2021 and uh, again the drone rules followed a very very uh, like you know crucial part in uh, developing and reshaping this industry 
So regulation on import of drones by Directorate General of Foreign Trade was regularized in 2021. Uh, for green zones specifically, no permission was required. No restrictions on foreign ownership in Indian drone companies as well. And the coverage of drones increased from 300 kgs to 500 kgs as well. Now, more amendments are being done in this list that import of drones were banned except for R&D defense and security purposes. So for these applications, import can be done. Uh, requirement of drone pilot license for operating craft. So like we are having a number plate on the drone, we are having a unique identity on the drone. The same way we need a license, a uh, driver license for operating a vehicle. The drone pilot license was mandated for drone system. And a uh, remote pilot service, RPC, issued by DECA, approved drone schools to provide sufficient drone uh, pilots to the So uh, we will move ahead with understanding the few crucial points that was uh, done and covered in the 20, uh, drone rules 2021. So these were uh, released in August 21. As uh, we discussed that there were multiple strict requirements, but the number of permits and approvals, which was earlier 25, was now re uh, reduced to only five. The rules has, uh, have established an online platform hosted by DGCA, or Directorate General of Civil Aviation, for managing various drone related activities in India called digital spans. So I hope that whoever is uh, present here in the session, uh, at least they have heard and they have checked the portal of digital span. Everyone is aware that if you want to know some uh, like uh, actual and uh, valid information about the drone, all the policies of the drones, we need to check the digital stack. So this this was something that was done under the drone digital. So uh, this uh, platforms provide a single window online system where all the permissions for uh, the drones can be generated by the individual without any you know uh, human interventions or any offices or any government offices. We need not to worry. Just by registering on the portal, we are good to go. So, uh, moving ahead, discussing about the potential of Indian drone market. So, uh, Indian drone market uh, stands on the value of uh, $2.71 billion, US a billion dollars, where the major sector is being covered by defense, uh, followed by logistics, enterprise, consumer, and passenger. Defense, definitely, the key use of drones in India. Defense are for surveillance, precision strikes, uh, terrain mapping, or scouting enemy troops. Moving ahead, Indian government is uh, Indian government uh, and army is rigorously encouraging companies to develop innovative concepts for uh, introducing modern machineries to their troops. Uh, government is looking, India is looking to procure uh, many RTVs. The small drones, which can be operated easily, can be carried with the soldiers easily. And whenever they are required to surveillance, uh, for do the surveillance or to uh, see that where there are some risks or dangers near the uh, army camps or anything. So these drones can be used for them. So Indian Drone Army has also issued multiple tenders for high, medium altitude logistic drones so that, you know, uh, there are multiple bases uh, of Indian government at very high to place. And to provide a lot of uh, things like commodities, uh, food, water, and a lot of things, it's very hard for the soldiers to carry it on their back and through vehicles. So Indian government is totally looking forward to do these services by using uh, deliberate homes, which can carry a payload of 50 kgs, 100 kgs, and in fact, 200 kgs. So you can understand that how rapidly the industry is growing. So for the defense sector, specifically the companies who are working, we are totally, uh, you know, contributing a lot towards uh, the development part and the users part of the drone. So uh, here again, 
defense for the defense sector nation's indigenous zone program that was from the indian air force uh, using an uh, american zone not through prefer was uh, done by the association of india air force now we discuss that moving ahead of the whole defense sector enterprise holds a lot of value and a lot of potential so enterprise basically means the agriculture sector public safety counter drones oil and gas utilities mining construction real estate gis and as well as mining as well so understanding the benefits of drone technology in agriculture industry so definitely when like nowadays i believe agriculture drones are a uh, very common part as compared to the previous uh, time for previous ages uh, like if there is doing a lot multiple companies are working on manufacturing and developing nanotechnologies and definitely companies are working on the uh, multi spectral drones which can work on the crop health monitoring so uh, how drones can help in agriculture industry they can help in enhanced production by uh, improving the capabilities through comprehensive irrigation planning adequate monitoring of crop health and increase knowledge about how we need to handle our soil how we need to adapt multiple uh, new technologies that can uh, contribute towards the better growth of the crops safety of farmers so uh, these uh, tanks the pesticides and the fertilizers which farmers carry on their back are very risky because when the chemical uh, enters the mouth or in fact the body parts it, it is very risky and farmers are being uh, associated to these chemicals which multiple times have led to cancers and multiple other uh, diseases so uh, by using drone technology we can definitely improve, uh, increase the safety of farmers data processing drone surveys that farmers with uh, accurate data processing that uh, encourages them to make quick and mindful decision without even a single thought which makes the farmer to invest their time and the right resources for the crops optimal use of resources every drone enables optimum use of all resources such as fertilizers water seeds and pesticides so just a very basic use case for this is that now everyone can see that we have drones in 10 liter capacity and 15 liter capacity but the uh, mindset of the farmer which was there was that for one acre of land uh, at least 200 liters is required so with the 200 liters of thing uh, this is something which is totally not required and the same purpose can be done only by using the 10 liter so this is what we are doing we are saving 190 liters of water and a lot of uh, the pesticides and chemicals as well as save body the health of crops by not over spraying by not over providing them uh, the unnecessary water or the chemical content so uh, also the drone technology insurance claims are also available farmers use the data captured through drones to claim crop insurance in case of any damage they even calculate risk losses associated with the land by the insurer so this is definitely a very add on because earlier what used to happen that uh, the insurance company used to collect uh, the sample of the soil and they were not even aware that from which farmers land they have collected the soil and for which farmer they need to provide the insurance and things but now with the multi spectral sensors and multi spectral cameras everyone can see that uh, this picture was clipped from this plan which ultimately helped the farmer in getting the right claims in their paper utilities utility sector generally covers uh, wind farm inspections power line and mobile tower inspections spraying for solar panels uh, and multiple other parts and inspection of Uh, solar power plants as well. Public safety definitely it's about the public gathering, surveillance. For example, like uh, February 2020, the uh, Delhi police used drones for uh, during the Delhi assembly election and rides in the city. Or like if you see wherever any any riot and drift happens, 
we can see on the news portals a drone flying nearby the reporter and everything so that you know this this shows that how uh, rapidly the officials the government bodies security agencies are even using these things in fact the up government used drones to monitor potential protest that was uh, being done when uh, the ram temple was being constructed in ayodhya so multiple multiple use cases are there where drones are being used for public safety so a uh, one crucial theme is samit theme so samit basically is survey of villages and mapping with improvised technology and village area so with this uh, theme it basically enable village household owners in inhabited areas with record of rights means that the data of their land was conducted uh, was captured using the satellite images which provides an accuracy of up to uh, 1 meter 1 meter to 2 meters while with drones this can be done in centimeters so you can think that you know uh, there are two people their houses are edges into each other and there is a dispute of 1 meter of land so you can understand that for that one meter, what what uh, a scenario will be there for the government for the farmers when there is no perfect record that whether this one meter area is under uh, which which uh, uh, persons had uh, like scope. So for this part, drones are being used. That you know, the drones are providing accuracy up to centimeters level, five centimeters, three centimeters. Which ultimately is making it very easier for government to, you know, uh, make uh, a very uh, right decision for the household owners so that they can keep the records of what land, what amount of land, which farmer, which uh, a villager is. Born. So, under this scheme, uh, approximately 6.62 lakh villages are to be covered uh, starting from 2021 to 2025. So and, and in fact, the uses of drones in construction and real estate is also being used. Like the Andhra Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh government is using uh, drones to monitor development activities of capital city regions like Amravati to drone-based output. Government of Karnataka is being used for property tax estimation. Chandigarh administration has deployed drones as a part of pilot project. To get an aerial vehicle of properties in Chandigarh. So this is this is something which which is a conclusion, which is an uh, add-on where the government initiated the summit scheme and multiple government bodies and the state governments were uh, able to use the drones for uh, multiple property related issues. So one of the big sector for logistics uh, for drones is the uh, logistics as well. So there are multiple challenges that drone solves. So last mile delivery is typically the most time consuming and a compromise a comprises an estimate of around 50% of total logistic cost. Like as I told you that there are many army bases which are on a very heightened area. So it is very uh, time consuming and a lot of uh, you know manpower and a lot of resources has to be used so that we can deliver uh, the basic amenities and resources to the people staying on the uh, higher basis. So in these scenarios, drone can definitely save a lot. In fact, overcoming traffic bottlenecks and reduce uh, vehicular uh, emissions, ensuring on time delivery while being ecological sustainable. Uh, logistics uh, drones uh, allow company to reach areas that cannot be accessed by other modes of transport due to difficult terrain, especially like there when uh, there are floods and scenarios like these uh, multiple uh, tragedies that happens in Uttarakhand and states of Himachal time to time because of uh, rains and floods and a lot of things. So in these scenarios, earlier we used to see that uh, helicopters were sent and deployed to provide uh, food packages, relief material, uh, water, medicines. But now we can see that drones are uh, doing the same with a very, very lesser cost. So uh, there are multiple key trends and growth drivers. 
for uh, the drone industry and trends. So uh, there are increased in drone-based startups, as I uh, mentioned to you that in the last uh, three to four years, if you see um, there are multiple companies, multiple startups that are being registered. So it is growing very rapidly um, because uh, the growth, because of the growth in sales, number of startups. India has uh, approximately 278 registered drone companies as of uh, 31st March, and like it's uh, currently we are in October. So the reports are till 31st March, which I can totally say that in uh, these current six months, the figure must have crossed the number of 300 companies. So uh, integration of AI definitely helps in the growth of the drivers. So as services. Uh, in many industries like mapping, surveillance, uh, agriculture, etc., uh, is getting standardized. And we will be seeing uh, many new and emerging spaces evolve. So these service industry uh, will complement the data when the companies are implementing big data, AI, ML, cloud, and analytics, uh, and BI. To offer a full stack solution. So not it's not not only about the uh, mechanical machines. It's about that the complete IT, the complete uh, AI is also being integrated to make this uh, machine uh, and this train grow on a very fast pace. Uh, also, uh, all the drone regulations are only meant to be so that everything can be regularized and whenever someone is doing something uh, related to this industry. So uh, they can totally uh, see and refer that what, what has to be done, what should be done, what can be done, and what not. So in these regards, drone regulations have definitely added a lot of value. Uh, we can see micro-entrepreneurs using drone services. So definitely India is anticipating a drone revolution phase now. Like multiple countries are looking forward, looking up to uh, India at how the entrepreneur uh, journey and the entrepreneur uh, like you, uh, ex people and uh, growth is there uh, which which india is seeing the future market ecosystem will definitely help uh, massify the drone adoption in india uh, one one important key driver definitely is make in india initiative uh, the government uh, as i mentioned that pli scheme was uh, launched so the objective of the scheme was definitely that people and companies prom promote make in India uh, and definitely do not uh, rely on importing, just importing the company. So in that scenario uh, for make in India scheme, PLI scheme, uh, government is providing incentives which can ultimately motivate people to uh, do the manufacturing in house. So uh, by reducing cost of labor and best quality of uh, better quality of data, uh, drones are making uh, the work very easy. The need of workers to work in risky environments like mines. So um, mines are area where uh, the drones uh, are doing a very very recommendable job, very commendable job. So where people cannot enter, uh, there are multiple cameras there. Uh, sensors, night sensor, day and night sensor, which can capture the data and you know take the report out of the dark nights. So, uh, large, uh, last but not the least, one important part that we should also uh, be knowing are few uh, challenges that this industry faces, so which are in terms of you know uh, consistent air speed and steady capabilities because. Drones can fly up to, uh, you know, uh, consistent uh, airspeed part. Need to fly a consistent part with a great deal of precision so that, you know, it should not be a case that uh, drones are moving on higher speed and the data, the right data is not being captured. So uh, this is definitely one of the challenges that we need to watch the speed of it. Uh, weather dependence, since we cannot fly drones during uh, fog, we cannot fly during strong winds and rains or uh, rains so our works definitely get altered because of the weather uh, condition uh, regularity barriers regularity uncertainty is uh, one of the main obstacles because multiple regulations are there but still like if you see the automobile industry 
so it is a well stable well uh, established industry while uh, drones is something which still is a growing in a growing phase so when someone something is in growing phase somehow someone or some company is working on a product do sometimes fa uh, faces the issues which uh, generally happens that uh, you know uh, like they are not able to get that how and what should be done in few particular scenarios so there were privacy issues drones uh, run on cameras and without taking the permissions they cannot go ahead several uh, rules prevent drones from invading people's privacy but many users of to disobey them there are multiple air space uh, restrictions as well like in multiple areas we cannot fly apart from that there are safety issues as well right like, uh, drones have limited batteries so suppose uh, drones are into an area where uh, uh, they are not being allowed so in this scenario uh, the case is like uh, it's very risky that what if the battery does improve or what if the battery Uh, percentage get lower so this these are few challenges that we generally face in the drone industry but definitely we are working on these part and i'm sure that uh, like we have come so far and we have been uh, doing a lot in this uh, uh, in the growth government is doing a lot in the growth companies are contributing startups are contributing so uh, multiple steps will definitely be taken to overcome these challenges as well in the future so uh, that was it. all from my end i hope uh, that was not boring <laughs> and uh, i was able to uh, some of uh, add and to like some value to the discussion and was able to provide some some sort of uh, understanding to the people so thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you very much yeah. आप लोग आपने आपका नॉलेज हमारे साथ शेयर किया और जो भी आज का आपने जो ड्रोन रिलेटेड जो भी मार्केट के जो भी नए नए रूल्स हैं नए नए प्रोडक्ट्स हैं उनके बारे में हमें बताया तो मैं अपने पार्टिसिपेंट्स को कहना चाहूँगा कि अगर किसी को भी कोई क्वेश्चन वगैरह है तो वो पूछ सकते हैं वो अगर किसी को कोई क्वेश्चन है तो वो अनम्यूट करके पूछ सकता है या चैट बॉक्स में भी डाल सकता है मे बी लगता है किसी को कोई क्वेश्चंस नहीं है तो हम यहीं पे आज का वेबिनार स्टॉप करेंगे और थैंक यू वेरी मच मैम कि आज हमारे साथ आप ज्वाइन हुए और हमें जो भी ड्रोन के रिलेटेड जो मार्केट में अभी चल रहा है उसका नॉलेज दिया थैंक यू वेरी मच और मैं सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स का भी थैंक यू करना चाहूंगा थैंक यू वेरी मच अब हम मिलेंगे नेक्स्ट सैटरडे नए टॉपिक्स और नए मेन सब्जेक्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू